Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Alar Khan here and in this video we see what? We continue the topic of the Z transform where we see the region of convergence. Before getting into the region of convergence, we go to an example. We go to the region of convergence through an example, right? So let's say the first example which is 10.1 uh, of the book. So let's say example number one is that my signal X of N is given as a to the power n u of n and with a value of a less than 1 right first of all uh, you need to keep uh, the things in your mind is that for a uh, signal x of n the corresponding x of z the z transform would be what summation n running from negative infinity to positive x of n multiplied z to the power negative n where the z is a complex number of magnitude r and angle omega fine yes fine so three formulas i already have told you but uh, but let's say i write it again over here you need to keep them in your mind always okay you always need to keep them in your mind the first is the summation n running from 0 to infinity a to the power n this would be the, the answer would be 1 over 1 minus a you've seen it in your basic mathematics uh, calculus or this thing algebra or something this is geometric series right if you have to finite number summation n running from 0 to let's say finite number n and then a to the power n so this would be equal to 1 minus a n plus 1 divided by 1 minus a this is the second formula the third is that summation n runs from 0 to capital n 1 to the power capital n so this would be equal to capital n plus 1 so these three formulas you need to keep in your mind at least at least you should remember them on your fingertips i am recording a video for a very long time so <laughs> i have forgotten these okay anyways so let's get into our example so x of n is given the corresponding x of z is unknown let's say i name this signal as x1 of n so x1 of z is unknown so my x1 of z would be what this would be a summation uh, n running from negative infinity to positive infinity x of n so you have a to the power n multiplied u of n and then it's multiplied z to the power negative n so have a look you have u of n this is a right sided signal if you are interested in the graph of it so the graph of it is what at, at the origin it would be 1 and then it would decrease uh, why it is decreasing like this because the, the the value of a is less than 1 if the value of a was greater than 1 if it was given in the question then it would be an exponential rising function so uh, the u of n first uh, would separate the right hand side right so we would have only a right sided signal so which means we would have a, a, a one sided summation first of all so if i write it like this that we have a summation n would run from 0 to infinity and this for both sided summation n running from negative infinity to positive this would be the bilateral z transform and one sided summation either on the left side or on the right side this would be a unilateral z transform we may see this later as well as we saw in the laplace transform anyways so we have a to the power n and u of n would be 1 in this case and then we would have a z to the power negative n multiplied to it right so now what can i do i can can i not write it like this that i have a summation n running from 0 to infinity i have an a z to the power minus 1 and whole to the power n i can write it yes so have a look have a look from this formula n running from 0 to infinity something to the power n is equal to 1 over 1 minus a so which means i would have it like this 1 upon 1 minus and wait let me cut this call first so 1 minus uh, a 
and then you have z to the power negative 1. So this is the answer to the first question. If you have a second question, x2 of n, x2 of n, this is equal to a negative a to the power n and then you have a u of n minus 1, right? So what would be the x of z for this? So have a look, uh, u of negative n minus 1. Yes, so uh, you know the time shifting, you know the, the time reversal properties. So if you apply, this is the time reverse signal, this is a time shifted signal. So, uh, so you know this very well that this signal u of negative n minus 1, this would exist from minus infinity to minus 1. This was the one minus infinity to minus one. So which means this is a left-sided signal in this particular case. So what do we have? So let's say now we find out the Fourier, the, the, the Z transform for this. So X2 of Z, this would be equal to uh, N running from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then you have a negative A to the power N, U of negative N, negative one, Z to the power minus N, which I could write like this. The negative I could take outside uh, and then I could have the summation as N running from negative infinity to negative 1 and then uh, uh, A to the power N and then U of N minus 1 would be 1 in this case and then I have Z to the power minus N. Isn't it like this? Have a look. The summation is from negative infinity to negative 1, which means it is not matching either of the basic formulas. Uh, and I do not know another formula for this sort of a summation. If you know, you could apply. I want to match it to some of this that I have written. So I do what? I uh, uh, let's say first uh, I write it like this that I take uh, negative and then you have n running from negative infinity to positive I take this negative n as a whole so you have an a you have a z inverse you have whole to the power n a z inverse whole to the power n no it's a inverse to the power z and yes you could always take it like this or you could take it uh, another way around as well number one like this number two you could say if you want to keep the z positive a negative so over here you will have a negative n these are the two ways what do you want me to go one or this two so anyway this is written so let this be it so uh, i don't have it to the basic formulas so let me uh, replace the variable of integration of the summation right so if i say that if this m is equal to negative n this is not infinity this is not the limits i put wrong okay this was fine but this was not fine so i say if let my m is another variable equal to negative n so then if n approaches negative infinity so this would imply that m would approach positive infinity when n approaches negative 1 m would approach positive 1 fine it is so now what can I do I could write it like this that uh, negative is over here already then you have n running from positive infinity to 1 a inverse z whole to the power minus n if I change the order of integration uh, of the summation it would uh, you know not have any effect so I could change this negative sign n would run from 1 to infinity you have an a inverse z whole to the power negative n. If you change the order of the summation, it does not have any effect. But if you change the order of integration, the limits, so it has a negative sign. Anyways, that's not our concern right here. So now uh, we are again, uh, we need n to the n running from 0 to infinity, but we have n running from 1 to infinity. So what can I do? I can, you know, uh, write this negative sign outside and I could just open up this bracket for a while if I have uh, let's say n running f n is 1 so I have an a z inverse right I would have an a z inverse no I made a mistake now I would have m now I would have m I made another mistake now I would have m right and 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 this negative n is also m 
this negative n is also m. So this was a mistake, fight, and thankfully I got it. So if m runs from 1, so if you have 1, so you have an a inverse z plus a inverse z whole squared plus a inverse, a inverse z whole cube plus up to plus so on. Now, now what do you do? Now, what do you do? If you take a inverse z common from here, if you, this is your negative sign already, if I take my a inverse z common from here, what would I have? I would have 1 plus a inverse z plus a inverse z squared plus a inverse z cubed plus up to plus 1 bracket and the second bracket. Have a look over this. Can I not apply a formula? Can I not apply the formula n running from 0 to infinity a to the power n? 1 minus a, right? I can. So, which means what do I have? I have a negative over here. I have an a inverse z over here. And for this, I would apply this formula a to the power n. So, this would become a 1 over 1 minus a. So, this would become like this 1 minus a inverse. So z. If I take a inverse z common from here, what could I write? I have a negative a inverse z over here. I take an a inverse z common from here. I would have an a z inverse minus 1. This would cancel out this one. If I take a negative sign, common as well, x2 of z would become 1 over 1 minus a z inverse. Is that fine till here? It is. We have a question. We have a question. What is the question? The question is, I was given a right sided signal. The Z transform is this thing. The second question, I was given a left sided signal. The Z transform is again the very same thing. So for two different signals, I have got, I have got the same Z transform. I have got the same Z transform. How do I differentiate it? If I had to go in the opposite way, if I had to find the inverse Z transform, if I am given this signal, I have given this in the, in, the, in the Z transform equation, what would I say? What is the corresponding signal? Is it this one? Is it this one? What would decide? The ROC decides. The region of convergence decides. So again in the Laplace transform, as in the Laplace transform, the Z transform is completely characterized by two things. The Z transform is completely characterized by two things. Number one, the mathematical equation. Number two, the values for which this would converge or we call it what? We call it the region of convergence. That is the extra information. The extra information. So if I say, to, you know, to, to, to write your Z transform, what do you need? You need your mathematical equation. And you need the values, you need the additional information, the values for which it would converge, the values for which it would exist, that is called the region of convergence, that is called the ROC. Fine. Fine. So, uh, let's say we talk about the ROC for both the signals. For the first, for the first, if I was, uh, let's say over here, if I am that summation n running from 0 to infinity, a to the power n, z to the power n, even. So if I write it like this, uh, if I split it, you know, so I have r to the power negative n, and then I have an exponential of a j omega n with a negative sign as well, right? So now what do you have? I would have it like this, that summation n running from 0 to infinity, I would have an a, a to the power n or to the power negative n, no, a and then r inverse whole to the power n with an exponential of negative j omega n, fine, yes, so the 
convergence does not have to do anything with this exponential negative g omega n. Why? Because the magnitude is always 1 and this would always converge. As we saw in the Laplace transform case, we have an exponential of negative sigma t into an exponential negative j omega t. So negative j omega t, we did not have anything. This term was redundant to find the ROC. The only thing that we were interested was the real part that is exponential of negative sigma t. Similarly, over here we are only interested in this thing. So have a look if you put the limits. Before this, before this, I need to tell you something. I need to tell you something. If I have let's say a function x is equal to a to the power infinity. If I have a function that is x is equal to a to the power infinity. Now if this value of a is greater than 1, if this value of a is greater than 1, let's say if this is 2, so this would imply that x would be equal to infinity. Anything to the power infinity. If it's greater than 2, if it's greater than 1, x would be equal to infinity. Right? For a greater than 1. Similarly, if you have, let's say, value of a equal to 1 over 2, this would imply x equal to 0, which means if the value of a is less than 1, so you would have a to the power infinity as a finite number. Let's say 0. Fine. This is case number 1. Then you have case number 2. Let's say y is a to the power minus infinity. If you have a number a is equal to 2, which means y would be equal to 1 over 2 to the power infinity. So now this would become 0. This would imply y is equal to 0. When? When a is greater than 1. Similarly, if a is 1 over 2, let's say, so in this case, y would approach infinity. When? When the value of a is less than 1. So these are the two cases. Now bear in mind these two cases. Keep in mind these two cases the whole Laplace the whole Z transform will revolve around these two have a look over here I have to put an infinity over here so if I have to put an infinity over here something to the power infinity positive infinity and I have to get a finite number out of it so which means I have to put a positive infinity I have to get a finite number out of it this should be less than one this implies that for the ROC, A R to the power negative 1 should be less than 1. Or you could say that A by R should be less than 1. Or you could say A should be less than R. And R is what? It's the, the real part of Z. So you could say that it's the, it's the magnitude of Z. So you could say that the, the, the magnitude of Z should be greater than A. This is the ROC for what? For the first signal. Fine. Similarly, over here, you have a negative infinity, negative n. You have a to the power n. You have r to the power negative n. You have exponential of negative j omega n. n running from negative infinity to negative 1 a r to the power minus 1 whole to the power n exponential negative j omega n. j omega term does not have anything to do with the roc the only thing that has to do with the roc is this thing right now i have to put the limits n equal to minus infinity so to put a limit to put a power of minus infinity I need this thing to be finite. What should be the condition? The condition is here. You have to put the power minus infinity. This thing should come out to be finite. This is finite for a value of the, this a to be greater than 1. Which means for region of convergence, this a r inverse has to be greater than 1. Which means that a divided by r has to be greater than 1. Which means that a has to be greater than r. And r is the absolute of z. Which means for this particular case, the region of convergence is that the absolute of z is less than r. Now, the answer is clear.
The answer is clear. Have a look. We've got a complete description for the first example. We've got a complete description for the second example. Is it clear? It is. You also have to draw it. You also have to draw it, right? So how do you draw it? This thing is very important again, as is this one, fine? Let's say I draw it where? So uh, this was A. This was A or this was R? This is A. This is A. Have I written it correct? Yes, I have. This is A. If you see, we are given a signal A to the power N. U of N, the corresponding Z transform is a 1 over 1 minus A Z inverse with the values of Z magnitude greater than A. If I draw the ROC for it, you could also say it in terms of poles and zeros, right? You could write it as what? You could write it as a 1 minus A by Z or you could write it as a Z over a Z minus A, right? Z minus A. Which means you have got a 0 at 0 and you've got a pole at A. You've got a pole at A, right? We're interested in the poles of it. So if I need to draw the ROC, the ROC would be like this. If this is A, right? The radius is A. So then the Z magnitude should be greater than A, which means that the circle that we are considering, where we have to calculate the Z transform, the radius of that is greater than this A, which means that the ROC is the entire plane outside of this circle. The ROC is the entire plane outside of this circle. Outside of the all circle, the Laplace transform can be calculated. Similarly, for the second example, you have a negative a to the power n, u of negative n minus 1. You have what? You have a 1 over 1 minus a z inverse. Similarly, you have again the same thing. This is equal to z upon z minus a, right? The region of convergence is that z is less than a. Now what do you do? You have like this, you have a circle of radius A, this is a pole A, this is a circle of radius A, now the region of convergence is what? It's inside this circle. It's inside this circle. Which means that the Laplace transform could be calculated anywhere inside this circle. The region of convergence of that circle would be, the, the radius of the circle would be less than this a and we were given uh, previously that a is less than one so which means that the unit circle is somewhere over here a is less than one right so this thing now is one similarly you can have over here as well this is one is that fine? It is. You could also relate it to the uh, to the to the Laplace transform. Over there, for right side signal, it was the right side plane. Over here, for the right side signal, it's outside the circle. For the left side signal, over there was the left side plane. Over here, for the left side signal, it's inside the circle. That is it. I think I finished this video over here. For the basic concept, I believe this much of the thing was enough. Right. We would continue our discussion of this thing uh, in the next video. But let's say before going into the next video, we, we check the book if we have any other points. We developed the Laplace transform in the extension of continuous time Fourier transform. Uh, it was the, the motivation was it could be applied to a broader class of signals. A Fourier transform does not converge, but the Laplace transform does. 
to perform the analysis of unstable signals and LTI system analysis, we use the Laplace transform. Similarly, over here we have for the discrete time case the Z transform. Y of n is H of Z and this the basic definition is given. The basic definition if uh, you have uh, an LTI system, so an eigenvalue and eigenfunction definition you know very well. Uh, if I write it over here somewhere, my Y of n is what? My Y of n is, this is not uh, correct. My Y of n is H of Z z to the power n this is when when this input z to the power n is given to the LTI system right so the eigenvalue property the eigenfunction property this thing would happen where h of z is what h of z is you know again very well that this is the summation n running from negative infinity to positive h of n and z to the power negative n is that fine it is fine and then you have the same thing which I have already told you. The Laplace transform reduces to the Fourier transform and the real part of the transform variable is zero. Interpreted in terms of S plane, this means Laplace transform reduces to Fourier transform on the imaginary axis. So please read out the book. I'm tired a little. Anyways, that is it for this video. See you in the next video very soon, inshallah, with I don't know whatever. Maybe we see some examples. Maybe we jump into the properties of ROC. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.